1. A typical Saturday. June 23rd, 2018. On the soccer fields of Maasai, Thailand, it sounds like a typical Saturday morning. The tap-tap of soccer balls passing cleat to cleat across the grass. The tweet of the coach's whistle and shouts of mark up and make some space. The hard thump of a well-placed foot, followed by the best sound of all. Silence as the ball flies past the goalie's fingertips, then a soft swish as it lands at the back of the net. It's only practice for the wild boars, a local boys team for players 11 to 17. But if they can keep sinking shots like that in their next game, they can't lose. In Thailand, as in most of the world, soccer is not just a sport, it's a total obsession. The scuffle and shouts of pickup matches can be heard at all hours of the day, whether in an urban metropolis like Bangkok or here in the small town of Maasai. Practice finishes and the boys huddle together, drinking water and wiping the sweat off their faces. It's a hot day, but at least there are clouds to shield them from the brutal sun. Talk shifts from World Cup rivalries to what they're going to do next. Everyone's eyes turn to 25-year-old assistant coach Ek Apon Chandawong, whom everyone calls Coach Ek. He's been promising to take the team on an excursion to a local cave, and all the boys want to know if their outing is still on. Being a wild boar means more than just getting together to play soccer a couple of times a week. The team is tight-knit, even though they go to different schools. The kids on the team have a reputation for being adventurous and outdoorsy, never sitting still for long, always ready to hop on their bikes to go exploring together. Coach Ig encourages the boys to be athletes beyond the soccer field, and he organizes regular hiking and bicycling expeditions for them. They often go swimming after practice, either at the neighborhood activity center or at local swimming holes. On the team's last outing, a strenuous bike ride to the top of a nearby mountain, Daitung. They discuss what their next trip would be. This area of Thailand is well known for its caves, the most famous of which is Tam Luang Nang Non, the cave of the sleeping lady. And they had agreed to go there together. Some teammates have to back out of the fun. They have too much homework, or their parents have made them promise to come home for this reason or that but 12 of the boys are still up for the adventure. Knight reminds the team that it's his birthday. His parents are having a party that evening, complete with food, a big cake, and lots of friends and family. The team is invited too, but they can't show up late, and they definitely can't show up covered in cave mud. Coach Egg tells them, we have to be out by five o'clock. Everyone agrees. They'll go for only an hour or so, and then they'll head back. The boys buy snacks to top up their energy before the bike ride to the cave. They go for the good stuff. Junk food like chips, soda, and their favorite candy bar called Bang Bang. And they scarf it down before setting out. They laugh and call out to each other as they cycle along. The oldest boys, the Knight and Knight's cousin Nick, are good friends with the coach. 14-year-old Adun is quite close to Coach Ek too. Adun is the only non-Buddhist in the group, and he is devoted to the Christian church he attends at Maasai, where he sings and plays guitar. The other parishioners raise money to send him to a good local school, where he is at the top of all his classes. The Boys of the Wild Boars In Thailand, Everyone has a formal first name and last name that are usually reserved for official occasions. Friends and family tend to call one another by a short one or two syllable nickname. People also address each other with a word that describes how they are related. For example, brothers and sisters call each other P for older siblings or Nong for younger siblings. But even people who are not related by blood will use these terms as a sign of respect and affection. The wild boars all call each other brother, and they refer to their coach as Coach A or Big Brother A. This is Maasai. The boys' home base of Maasai is a small but bustling town on Thailand's northern border. 
Market carts display all sorts of wares from Thailand, Myanmar, Laos, China, and beyond. Goods flow back and forth across the border. People, too. Maasai is as diverse as you'd expect a border town to be. In the markets, you hear Thai spoken alongside Lao, Mandarin, Cantonese, Burmese, the official language of Myanmar, and local indigenous languages. Tourists come here from all over the world, but especially from China, Europe, and the United States. Most people in Maasai are Buddhist, but Muslims and Christians also call the town home. It's a vibrant, busy place where women balance baskets of coffee beans on their shoulders as motorbikes zip in and out of the lanes of traffic, waiting their turn to cross the border. In this region, most families are farmers or members of the working class. The wild boars know that getting a good education is vital. They hope that if they study hard and get a good job someday, they can earn enough money to help support their families. Maybe then they can give something back to their parents who work tirelessly so their children can focus on school and soccer. Peddling with him are fellow eighth graders Not and Thun. Few weaves among his friends, driving his moped. Next come the inseparable 13-year-olds who go to school together. Dom, who is the team captain, Mik, and Pong, a jokester who isn't as serious about class as the other boys. The little boys work to keep up. 13-year-old Mak, who is the smallest member on the team, and an 11-year-old chubby-cheeked Taipan, the youngest player, who begged his parents to let him join the wild boars. Despite the differences in their ages, these 12 boys are very good friends. They hardly ever get into arguments, though they do love to tease little Taipan, who usually takes it all in stride with his big smile. As the boys cycle on, paved roads give way to dirt, and neighborhood dogs trot out to greet them. The Nang Nan mountain range rises up behind them, a blurry dark green, as they ride past homes and apartments, repair shops, and open front stores selling furniture, restaurant equipment, and plastic toys. After a few minutes on their bikes, the boys are on the one-lane roads that wind through farms and into the mountains. The wild boars love these trips, when they can leave behind their stacks of homework and get up into the fresh green hills that hover over their neighborhoods. The boys' parents are happy that their children are adventurous. It's much better for them to be out in nature, exercising their bodies and minds, than stuck at home watching a screen or wandering under the artificial lights of a shopping mall. Besides, they're with Coach Ake, who is much more than just a coach. Ake believes that his duties don't end on the field. He feels that in order to be a good leader, he needs to understand the boys as individuals. In turn, they sometimes listen to their coach more than they do their own parents. But rather than being annoyed, the parents are grateful that their sons have such a good influence. They trust Ake deeply, and he even babysits for them sometimes. He is young enough to feel like another son or nephew to the boys' families, but he carries the wisdom and maturity of someone who has been through too many of life's hardships. They hope their sons can learn to be like him. Luckily, the boys want the same thing. Tam Luong is only a few miles from the soccer field, and the team turns off the main road after about half an hour. As they pump up the gravelly track to the entrance, birds swoop through groves of banana and lychee trees. Yellow and brown spotted butterflies flit past as pineapple fields give way to thick jungle that shades the road. The last bit of the bike ride is all uphill, muggy and sweaty. Soon, the team is gratefully walking their bikes toward the cool, dark mouth of the cave. They set their bikes on the ground outside and swap their cleats for flip-flops. Coach A leads the boys up to the entrance, bringing along the supplies he's packed, a coil of thin rope and flashlights. They walk past the faded sign warning visitors not to enter during rainy season, as the cave floods at that time. But they don't pay the sign much attention. It's only June 23rd and the heavy rains are still weeks away.